Ready? Ready? Three, Three, two, two, one. one. Welcome back to another episode of Shit That Goes On In Our Heads. Today, we are joined by the wonderful, lovely Mari. Welcome, Mari. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. I know. I'm excited to talk to you, especially after the day I've had. It's been wild, crazy work day. I feel like I need cleansing of sorts. <laughs> Wait till you find out what's going on in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can distract each other from our own reality and step yes. into another another reality together. <laughs> So you've had a tough week? I've had a tough year, it feels like. Yeah, I've had a tough week. But usually, and it's not the holidays either, because usually I always tell people, they don't even realize that people tend to get incredibly stressed around the holidays. Even even if you think that you're like the most easygoing person, that you don't do much, that you don't prep much, we have so much expectations. We have so much pressure that we put on ourselves, even if we do the bare minimum. And everyone and their crowds everywhere and everybody's shopping and everyone's like, what are you doing? And what do you do? Well, how about if I just stay home and do nothing? Wouldn't that be nice? I would love that. Right? No presents, nothing. Just me, a book, maybe a cup of tea, a cozy blanket. This is perfect. This is what I want. This is what I want for the holidays. I swear to God, the two of you are soul sisters. (laughs) I know. We started last year. I'm calling it a tradition. This will be our second year where on Christmas Eve. So my family, they go big on Christmas Eve. It's usually a huge party. Everybody dresses up. It's like a big thing, right? And when you're younger, I think that that's fun. But again, like you said, you're stressed towards the holidays. Same here. Work is crazy. It's not the holiday season that's stressing me out. It's everything else, right? So last year, same sort of scenario. And we started a Christmas Eve that we would host, but it was come in your pajamas and we'll play games and laugh and take ourselves not serious at all. And we do a white elephant gift so that we don't have the stress of getting everybody something. I love them. And so, yeah, this year we're even thinking of like, let's just do like a taco bar. Like, why does it have to be a huge thing? Like, it's just, I just want it to be a relaxing, fun, stress-free. I feel like that would be even more fun. You know, taco bar and like dessert bar maybe or something. Yeah. Maybe it's their own Sundays. and that's it. Right. Like make whatever you want with these ingredients. (laughs) You know, I really do like that. I really do. It gets a bit too much. Do you have booze included in that? Always. I do do a cocktail. I will commit myself to making a themed drink. Uh This year, I keep seeing recipes on TikTok for a white margarita. I might go for... I love tequila, so like count me in on that. So yeah, there's liquor involved for sure. I can get behind that. I like that. I really... That sounds like... Sounds really... Try it. If you're in Georgia, stop by. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that far. You know, only about like nine hours. No. Yeah. <laughs> What's 11 hours? We, we just had so much fun last year. And it was my in-laws and my parents and my brother and my, niece, my nieces and nephews. And we just had fun playing yeah. silly games, everybody laughing. It was just a blast. It was the best. So this is what it should be about. Yeah. This is what it should be about. Not again, presents. Although, you know, I do like getting presents. I won't lie. (laughs) No, I I, I do. But I mean, it shouldn't be about presents or, you know, things I must get accomplished, things I must do. And what if, you know, what if I don't cook 17 dishes? And what if I order? I mean, I don't know. It's just too much pressure. Too much pressure. Y'all should be like me. For every one present I buy somebody, I buy myself two. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. got everything you ever need because you pulled the presents. <laughs> that's that is correct. I know. What does that leave everybody else to get you though? If you're buying everything you want, I, I buy the expensive stuff. Okay? Like, yeah. I like can, that. I like you, that even more. You can buy me the test toys. You can buy me, you know, 
a locator for my phone, you know, things like that. <laughs> you can buy me those kinds of things. But, but you know, I'm kind of bougie when it comes to my, my electronics. So, you know, I don't want to leave that in the hands of somebody, you know, that's inexperienced and doesn't live in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know what you like. I like that. You know what I requested? And I'm being dead serious right now. I requested energy healing sessions. I'm not kidding. And that's not because this is what I do. It's not that. It's because I know that I cannot work on myself with myself. Because once I start getting gunk out and I start, I'm, I'm emotionally involved. And it's very like, sometimes I get really, really deep. And I feel like I need someone who's completely objective. Someone who's not, you know, involved in the outcome, not emotionally involved with what's going on. So I have two teachers that I've, I've worked with and now I go to them for my session. So I really want someone who's getting me presents, just get me sessions so that I know that it's paid for and I don't need to worry about it. And I could use them when I need them yeah. because I do need them. I mean, we all need them. Yeah. And, and for the listeners, we're recording this now it's before Christmas, but this is a PSA for you, Mari. Whoever's yeah. listening. For your birthday, any gift, energy yeah. healing sessions. Because it's the best gift. It's something that I know I will love and I will use. And it's not just, you know, get me a session with anyone. It's with people I trust. And I know that they they get the they get the job done. Yeah. So yeah. So talk to us a little bit about how you found that to be helpful for yourself. Okay. So this is the story I tell. This is this is completely true. This is my story and it's true. I spent over 20 years severely depressed. I didn't even know how bad, de- how badly depressed I was. I didn't realize it because I had what they call a functional depression where you're able to get up in the morning and you're able to force yourself to do the things you need to do and go to work and take care of your family. And then I would w- wake up at night, not able to sleep, thinking, to an to outsider looking in, it seemed like I have everything everybody could ever want. I had a family, I had a career, I had friends, I was liked, I was respected, you know, everything was great. And I was thinking, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me that I am so unsatisfied and I'm feeling this heavy fog that follows me everywhere? It's like I felt like I went everywhere in this fog, you know? I couldn't feel things deeply. I couldn't get too happy. I, nothing was working. I tried everything. I tried medication. I tried meditation. I tried therapy, conventional therapy. Some things helped a little bit. I'm not saying nothing worked. You know, some things helped a little bit, but nothing made that much of a difference. And so I said, okay, let me clean up my diet. Let me take out all processed foods. That helped a little. That didn't cure me. I don't like that word, but that didn't really help. Okay, scolding hot showers, you know, ice baths, all the things, all the things that I tried everything. And I was getting pretty desperate. I was thinking to myself, what's the point? What is the point? If this is how I'm going to spend the rest of my life, what is the point? And so, and I am a software developer by trade. So I'm very love brain. I'm very logical. If I can't taste it or smell it or see it, it does. Well, I used to think that way. It doesn't mm-hmm. exist. And so a friend of mine introduced energy medicine and I was very skeptical. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, "Ah, this can't possibly help me. I tried everything else, but she convinced me to try a session. And reluctantly, very skeptical. I was very skeptical. I went, I probably was the worst client of that poor woman. (laughs) I was like, explain to me how this is going to help me. Explain to me how this works. I want a scientific explanation, you know, because that's how my brain used to work. And so that one session was life-changing. And look, I'm not telling you that, it again, that I was never depressed again, that that was the magical one that completely took all my you know worries away. It, it wasn't that, but it was the missing piece. It was that missing piece of the puzzle that made the whole puzzle come together. And I was like, what is that? What just happened to me? And it wasn't, see, another thing is, and so I'll, I'll quickly say that I'll, finish that sentence <laughs> my ADHD gets anyways. <laughs> and so I made it my life mission to learn all I can about energy medicine and energy healing so I could bring this to people I could show people that they have options that they may not be aware of because if you don't know it exists you can't possibly use it right one of 
my passions is marrying the scientific approach and, 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 and spirituality, explaining that what I do is not woo-woo, it's not pseudoscience. I don't dress up like a witch. I don't chant. There's none of that. I mean, there is place for that, I'm sure, somewhere, but that's not what I do. Most, I'll say most, I won't say all, <laughs> most of the methods and modalities that I use are based on science. Mostly everything that I do can be explained by this is how your brain works. This is how your body works. This is how we, we don't question that there's energy when we talk about physics. There's energy everywhere. We're all made of the same stuff. So I make sure to explain to all of my clients what I do, what, what it does, so that there's no mystery and they know exactly what they're getting into and what, what's going to happen. So they're not spooked and they're not scared. Not of it is scary. Not of it is scary at all. There's some things that I do that are a little out there mm-hmm. that do require faith, but that's, you know, that's for people who, want that kind of thing. Most of the stuff is, has to do with trauma, has to do with your emotions and your energy. And everyone knows we have chakras, right? You go to any yoga, yoga studio, there's chakras displayed everywhere. And just like we have blood vessels, we know, everybody knows that, right? We have blood vessels that carry blood to every organ, every cell, every muscle. We have energetic highways in our system that carry energy to every organ, every cell, every muscle. So what I do is I make sure that the energy is flowing smoothly. That's all I do. That's literally what I do. And I did say some to someone, and they thought it was funny, but also like disgusting, that I'm an energ- energetic plumber. This is what I do. I dig on your energetic system. I get the gunk out because you want that energy to flow smoothly. And if anyone ever has gone to get an acupuncture pre- treatment, what is acupuncture? You go and you say you have a headache and they take a needle and, you, and they put it in your foot. And you're thinking, what does that have to, why aren't they putting it in my head? Like you would think, right? Because mm-hmm. I have a headache. They put these needles in specific points where the meridians, meridians are energetic highways where they meet. This is the place when your energy is blocked. This is the place we're going to put a needle to unblock your energy. This is exactly the same idea. This is exactly what I do. But now the needles. And I'm not saying don't go to acupuncture. It's a wonderful, wonderful method. And there's place for everything, you know? And I always tell people, if you have a therapist you trust, please, by all means, go to therapy. If you have a doctor you trust, trust is the key. And they prescribe you medication. Please take that medication. I will never tell anyone not to do it. But also consider adding energy healing into your regimen so that you get, you know, all of these things that are beneficial. So we'll work as a team. That was a lot of words. No, you're good. I have, taking a step back, I have a question. So you have a friend who recommends this and you go, did you know what to expect? Like walk me through what that first session was like, like what was your experience? So the first session that I had was actually in the emotion which one of the which is now is one of the first modalities I got certified in. I loved it. I loved it. It's amazing. I actually flew out to Florida to a conference with Dr. Bradley Nelson, who is the creator of this modality. And I needed to meet him and I needed to ask him one question. This I needed to have this question answered. I said, Can you please tell me, is there any way that I could cause harm if I use this incorrectly? And he said, No. The worst thing that could happen is that you don't help. Mm-hmm. That's the worst thing that could happen. And I thought to myself, you know, what to with that. If that's the worst thing that could happen, and we leave things as is, I'm fine with that. So I walked into an energy healer and she explained to me, she explained about the method. She told me that she's going to be using muscle testing. Muscle testing is also known as applied kinesiology. It's the study of how your muscles react to truth, true and false statements. Your body knows, your subconscious mind has all the answers. Your body knows all the answers. And when we ask a question of ourselves, that is true. Our muscles react strong to the truth and weak to false. So there are ways to test that. There are many, many different ways to muscle test. I, in my practice, use what's called ring and ring method. I'm going to show you, I, I can show the listeners, but... It's basically two fingers interlocking like this. 
And so when you say true, something that's true, you, they're holding strong. But when you say something that's false, they come apart easily. And so I would ask a question and say, for example, my name is Mari. And I would try to pull them apart and strong because it's the truth statement. And then I would say, my name is Samantha. And I'll try to pull them apart and comes apart much more easily because it's false. So what I do is, and that's what that practitioner did. She asked a series of questions. She question one, a session one, pretty much like this. Is there an underlying imbalance that's contributing to Mari's depression? And the answer was yes. I was like, can I try to identify? The answer was yes. So she went through a whole, she has a chart, we work with charts, asking all these questions and try to identify them. And one of the things, one of the main things that I was not even aware of, and none of us are, every emotion that you feel in your life, no matter how big or small, you could either process it and let it go, or it could get lodged in your energetic body, so known as your aura. Everyone knows you have an aura, right? Mm-hmm. And so that, we call it trapped emotion, it becomes, it gets lodged. Now your energy is not flowing smoothly, and so what happens, it's like it's a little bowl of energy that's sitting there. Your energy is not flowing. You're attracting more of that. So with me was, I was five years old. I was sleeping at night. I heard a noise. And I completely forgot this in this event because you don't remember this most of the time. I heard a noise in the hallway and I got really scared. I thought somebody broke into the house. I thought we have an intruder. You know, five-year-old, you don't, you're afraid what you're afraid of. And it was my mom. She was getting a drink of water, right? Nothing to be afraid of. But that fear, it wasn't that huge. You know, it wasn't like that if the house is burning down. But to me, it was big and important. It got lodged. And so now I have this emotion of fear that's sitting there and vibrating in a certain frequency. Now I'm more likely to attract more fear because I already have this vibration, right? And then it grew into panic. And then it grew into anxiety. And then it grew, and then it grew, and then it grew, and it became this overwhelming thing that ultimately contributed to me having depression that I never would have remembered. It's five years old, you know? Yeah. And she was able to identify and release all of these emotions. And it took work. It wasn't one session. I had a lot. <laughs> I had a lot. And look, look, just like you inherited, I'm not saying you, you, I'm saying yeah. anyone. You inherited your eye color, your hair color from your parents, right? Mm-hmm. You inherit these emotions. They may not be yours. Everyone talks about ancestral trauma. This is what it is. Mm-hmm. You inherit the stuff from grandparents 17 generations back, you know? Or how about all these people who are watching 9-11, at 9-11, watching the towers fall, right? They're not related to one another in any way, shape, or form, but they're watching the same traumatic effect. So a traumatic event. They experienced the same shared emotion of panic and terror, whatever it was, fear, right? They all shared an emotion. So if I were to work with one of them and release that emotion, guess what it does? It releases from everybody else who shares it with them. Just like, you know, inherited emotions, it releases from you. If, if you got it from your dad, it releases from your dad. If you got it from his dad, it's like it cleans the whole line. It's amazing. And this work is mind-blowing, mind-blowing. It's so simple. It is so elegant. And it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Having a son, a, I don't know how it happened, but I think it must be just learned, right? Like I am very aware and, and cautious with my own fears so that I don't influence him. Like that was something that I must have just picked up as a child, like seeing my parents fear their opinion or belief on something and knowing that I have like for a a very, (laughs) this is a real example, but just to give you something to hold on to is I have a fear of whales. I don't like whales. I'm not going to SeaWorld, period. But when you have a child, they want to go to SeaWorld, right? So I know that if I, first of all, I would do anything to make my child happy, right? So I know, is the possibility of me going to SeaWorld high enough? Yes. If I did go to SeaWorld, I don't want him to see his mom afraid of whales because it's not really, like, it's 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 an unreasonable fear. And I don't want it to influence his experience at SeaWorld. And so, like, that is, like, a very real thing that, like, I think about 
with a lot of stuff that we interact with every day is like making sure I'm allowing him to experience his life in that moment without my influence. Yeah. Like I try so hard and I know it slips because we're not perfect, but it's something that, you know, it's important to me to let him not be influenced by my. I totally understand that. Yeah. I totally agree to that. The only thing I could say, and this is not as Mari energy hero, but Mari mom Mm -hmm. who did the same exact thing, no matter how Mm -hmm. much you try, they develop their own fears. They develop Mm -hmm. their own insecurities. And you just sit there and wonder, (laughs) this is why I won't work with my daughter also. Because when I started getting stuff out and I uncovered that she had, you know, anger towards me at the age of seven. And then I asked her, I said, was there something? I could get more, it gets more detailed than that. It's not just like, you know. And I said, was there something? She says, yes. She says, my friend had a box of crayons that were that these fans. This is true. She says, really fancy crayons that I really wanted. And you didn't get them. And I was very angry with you. And I said, why did you ask me? She says, no, I never asked you to get them. So I had no way of knowing she wanted them, but she had the anger. Point is, it hurts when I see which her emotions. So I won't work with her, but fears and insecurities and they just like, wow, how I tried so hard. I tried so hard. I watched how I spoke to her. I watched how I, how I behaved. I tried not to show her, you know, nope. nope. <laughs> so, so do you still have that fear? Like with the spiders does little nugget. Oh, do he not loves me spiders. Way. Okay. Yes. I'm trying to actually think back on if he knows how afraid of spiders I am, he probably does. He loves them. Snakes. Oh, I have a, st- yes, snakes. I'm afraid, I'm afraid of a lot of things, but um, yes, snakes, I'm not a fan of. They had a petting, like a petting zoo, kind of like a wild creature guy at one of his schools. And I was distracted getting like a snow cone for my son and I turn around and sure shit this guy's there with like this huge freaking snake and I'm holding the snow cones and like just slowly crushing and melting them (laughs) but I was like oh it's great honey yeah pet the snake and like I was like oh my god (laughs) I just I just because what thought made me think of that is just you I remember you sending me the picture of the spider near your tomato plants and you're like, we need to burn it down. Yeah, I don't know if he knows how how afraid I am, but I know he knows mom does not love spiders. He does. He doesn't love and terrify it. Too yes, yes. Like, there's a scale. You know what I, but I am curious about whales because, you know, spiders, snakes, I mean, I could understand. Oh, I know that. exactly like, where it comes from as, as a child. Okay. Like, it's like, a, literally feels like it happened yesterday. As a kid, we were in school. And we were in a library and they had a lot of National Geographic magazines. And I pulled one because I loved National Geographic magazines when I was little for whatever reason. And I pulled one and on the friggin' cover was two men in like a canoe, not technically a canoe, a small little boat, right? And a breached whale. And the visual of these two men who are bigger than me being so small compared to this whale. And I thought, dude, if that whale just like, I don't know, moved a certain way, that boat's toppling over. Down in the water they go next to this huge whale. (laughs) Talking about it, I'm like, (gasps) and that's my fear is this huge, and it really is anything massive. Like I get like that with skyscrapers too. So I don't know, but the whale specifically. Oh, New York, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) Like I, like, oh, yeah. But that's exactly where it comes from. And I know it's ridiculous. My friends tease me about it. But it's I'm not like, ridiculous. It's important to you. Yeah. It's, it's important to you. It made an impact on you. It's, yeah. Let's just say what's big and what's small, right? Right. Right. And I, I tell my friends that I've made it this far because I am safe and I don't go near the whales. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever considered getting rid of that fear, okay? <laughs> not me. Not recommending my... I'm not. There is a modality that one of the ones that I actually use, it's called Psy K. It is phenomenal. The reason I said not me, it's because I only work with people that this is the only thing, the only modality when I have to be 
in person. Okay. Everything else I do on Zoom and in person, but this was the only one because this is very important. This modality, it's in, uh, everything I do is just mind blowing. So this one is, it changes the software of your brain. It, cha- it, says, no, it doesn't change your brain. That's your hardware, right? Mm-hmm. It changes the software. It changes the programs that you're running. And it's so freaking quick. <laughs> and it's so, it is quick. It is simple. It will literally change the way you feel about whales or spiders or, you know. Just fears. Anything. Anything. It is crazy, but I just can't do it on, you know, on, on Zoom because there's a reason for that. Yeah. I think you should focus on the spiders before you do the whales. Just because <laughs> they're everywhere. <laughs> Spider haven. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. We're in we're in Georgia, and I I've never seen what are they banana spiders ever in my mm-hmm. life, and they were freaking everywhere on our trees. You looked up, there's these huge. It was they were everywhere, and we had guests and their friends of ours for the pest control podcast, and so we were sending photos one day after I had had a couple of cocktails. I needed them to fully grasp and understand the dire situation I was in. <laughs> <laughs> and they swear it's like the best spider to have. Like, no, leave them. They'll eat all the little bugs. And, you know, so I did. Any spiders. How about no spider is the best spider? <laughs> I like that. No right, spider. Right. He was like, well, technically all spiders are venomous. I was like, done. Just burn it all down. And so I. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I don't like creepy crawlers. I don't like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you you went in to your first session. It impacted you enough. I find it very interesting that this part of the puzzle that you would have never thought to be helpful or like a thing, right? Because it wasn't... I didn't know it was a thing. Right. And now it, it has impacted you so much that it has become such a big part of your everyday. I just find that very fascinating. So what has been... I guess one of the coolest or most impactful things that you've learned about this new lifestyle. Well, simple healing can be. How straightforward and simple and quick healing can be. I have stories I could be telling until tomorrow, but the, the craziest stuff. I mean, I specialize in depression and anxiety and trauma just because that's what brought me, you know, to the plea. But that's not all I do. I have one client who she had foot fungus that wouldn't go away. And she was taking medication for it. And sometimes that medication could be heavy on the liver and could be, you know, Mm -hmm. she wasn't loving the effects of medication. And she said, it would go away and it would come back. It would go away. Two sessions, it's been gone for a year. She said her skin is so clear that you cannot tell there was ever anything there. That's crazy stuff. Like, yeah. That's crazy stuff. I have a client who, two clients actually, I was working with them at the same time. I w- they were both trying to get pregnant. One lady w- has been trying for six years and another one for two. And they got pregnant at the same time. They got pregnant. I, I didn't get them pregnant. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> They're not your babies. Spouses <laughs> did the work. But what I helped do, and this this is important, okay? I am not a healer. I don't heal people. That's very important to understand. When you fall down and you scrape your knee, you don't need to tell your knee that it needs to grow new skin. It knows what to do. Your body has an innate ability to heal. When you cut, I cut myself today slicing potatoes. My skin, you know, it's going to heal. I have a Band-Aid on just because it's uncomfortable, but I don't need to tell myself, well, now you start growing your skin. It knows what to do. All I do is help your body help heal itself. And I remove energetic blocks so that it could do so efficiently and quickly. So both ladies got pregnant. That was incredible. I was going somewhere with this. I promise I was going somewhere. Was I going? <laughs> it does stress all the time, believe me. It does. I wanted to say, oh yes. Yeah, so what I wanted to say is how quick it could be, how incredibly easy it could be and how it could apply, it could be applied to every area of your life. It doesn't have, some people come to me not because something's wrong. Some people come to me because A, they want to see how much better it could get. And B, some people come to me and they say, look, I'm stuck. I've been working at this job, you know, pays the bills. 
I'm unhappy, but I don't want to leave because it pays the bills and I have security and I've been there for so long. Can we see what's stopping you? What's getting in the way moving forward? So what I was talking about before, the emotion code identifies trapped emotions we have. Then Dr. Nelson created another modality on top of that that's called the body code. The body code deals with trapped emotions, yes, but also imbalances in your body, in your chakras, in your circuits and systems. It looks for toxicity. It looks for mold exposure. It looks for organs and glands that need to be maybe maybe need to be balanced. How about disconnections when people experience a traumatic event? You know how they seem like I dissociated or I left my body for a second because that was the only way to survive? Well, people sometimes don't fully come back. They come back, but not fully. So there's this disconnection. So the body code addresses the whole, all of you. And then there's another one that just came out and it's mind boggling. It's called the belief code. It identifies your negative core beliefs that subconscious programming that you've been running, that you're not aware and it, how everything connects. So I work with people who want to make a change in their life. They're happy, but not 100%. Or maybe they want to be a little happier. So let's see. Let's see what we could figure out. Let's see what's holding you back. Incredible with children. Absolutely incredible with children. Anxiety with children. Children's, you know, anxiety now. We were under, we're under the quarantine. I'm in New York. We had it bad. You know, kids were on Zoom. They were studying on Zoom. And some kids, they started school on Zoom. The little ones, they never actually went to school. Mm-hmm. And now suddenly they have to go to a classroom. They're scared out of their minds. Mm-hmm. They don't know what, what to expect. So anxiety with kids, very, very quick, usually. I mean, I'm not making claims and every case is different, but usually it's quick. Also because they don't, haven't accumulated enough gunk yet. They're still little. Something else I wanted to say. Oh, and a lot of times, and I talk about this a lot. A lot of times people who are depressed, they don't know that they're depressed. Because what we think, we think dep- what we think de- what what is traditional definition of depression, right? The feeling of gloom and doom, but it could be so much more than that. Food preference changes, being on high alert all the time, sleeping too much, not sleeping enough. Everyone knows that. How about suddenly changing changing your behavior, avoiding people? You don't know something's wrong, but you just can't be with other people. You get tired super quickly. You know you. Your preferences change. You get hot or you get cold. There could be so many different things. There's not one way to identify it. So a lot of times people don't know what's going on. And they'll come to me and says, look, I, I don't know. I'm just not myself. And it's been going on for a while. Nothing wrong. I went to the doctor. They did all the tests. There's nothing physically wrong with me, but just something doesn't feel right. Let's see what we could find out. Yeah. And I'll add one more thing is that the more I do this work, and this is really incredible, the more intuitive I become. And at this point, it is not ha-ha funny, not, not never funny, but it's a little funny how during a session, I would know exactly what this one thing that we're working on, what it, what, what came, like what it was caused from, which event. I had a client, I have a client. I, he had, we uncovered emotion of, I think it was fear. I don't really remember. That's not relevant. At four year, excuse me, four years old. And I kept saying, I see a big white dog. I see a big white dog. But I knew my client never, never owned any dogs. And then he sat for a second and he goes, oh my gosh. I was at a shopping mall with my parents and they let go of their hand. His, you know, was old mom, dad, doesn't matter. Let go of the hand that was holding them. And for a second, I thought I was lost. And there was a dog that was being walked towards me. And for a little four-year-old kid, seeing a decent-sized dog when he thinks he's lost, he was terrifying, you know? And so it, he tracked that. So stuff I get in sessions is just, and I know him now. Like, I don't know what happened when he was four, when he was at the mall with his parents. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, really I, interesting. I wish I had known about this modality, you know, last year, I probably would have really benefited from it. Yeah. That's the probably would have gotten to the point where I got to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is why I, uh, this is why. So I started teaching free classes at my local library. And everybody asked me, why do you do this? Why do you spend so much of your time doing this and like giving back? Because I want people to have tools. I want people to be able to help themselves. I don't want people to be 
depending on, depending on anyone, myself included. If someone wakes up in the middle of the night, it's 3 a.m. and they're anxious and they're shaking and they can't sleep. What are, what are they going to do? They can't call the doctor. They can't call the therapist, right? You start tapping. You start tapping. EFT, emotional freedom technique. The scripts are available anywhere online. There's so many scripts available. They're super simple. Is it going to cure you? No. Is it going to reduce your anxiety? Yeah. It's going to help you. It's not going to make you sleepy, like so sleepy that you'll fall right back asleep. But it will take it down a natural too. And a lot of times that's what you want. Point is, people don't know that all these things are about. And this is why I'm screaming from the rooftops. There are so many options. There are so many options. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. I think just in general, it, I mean, I think I can relate to what you had said in, in G-Rex. I know from your personal story too, it's like you get to a point where you're desperate and you will try something new, right? Because you've tried things that have failed you in the past. And and that's usually, I mean, it worked for me. It was when I learned what I thought was normal, like my normal state of being was me in survival mode. You know, you don't realize that that's a thing until you actually talk and you speak to somebody and you start to kind of uncover these things that you've like pushed down or, you know, or just quote unquote dealing with, right? So I think for anybody that's listening that is at a point where they need something else, I would recommend, right? Like see see somebody like you and, and figure out what they've been missing. What's the missing link? Yeah. What's the missing right. link? Because sometimes, you know, therapy and, it, you know, person-to-person therapy just doesn't do it for people, right? Yeah. And you, you need that extra something just to help, you know, get you over the edge. But, you know, for me, I going to therapy and just sharing my story helped me tremendously because, you know, I didn't want anybody to feel as lonely and messed up as I felt because on the outside, I looked just fine. Exactly. I was making people laugh. I was getting my shit done. But on the inside, I, I was tapped out. I was done. Um, well, you know, fast, wide inside, yeah. Fast forward a year. There'll be a year on Christmas. I feel so much better. I'm like a, a different person. That's amazing. But I know how you feel. I know we, I could totally relate to that. From the outside in, everything was fine. Everything looked great. Yeah. And I felt like I can't wake up. I can't wake up another day because it was, it was just yeah. so dark. It was so dark and so lonely. And you can't even like, you can't even explain, even if you have, not everyone has people who care and they could share things with. But even if you're lucky enough to have someone. <laughs> It's not something you could explain. They don't understand it. There are no words to explain it. And so I don't want to say until they feel it. I don't wish that on anyone. But until someone experiences this, they don't understand what it feels like. Yeah. People yeah, are I, different I, and complex and not everybody's going to understand exactly what you're going through. And yeah. And I, I think for me is, you know, I couldn't find my voice and I couldn't find my footing. So I couldn't really tell anybody what was going on because I was still trying to figure it, figure it out for myself. But, you know, I, I just got more and more depressed and it, I don't ever, ever, ever want to feel that way again, ever. I don't wish that on anybody because it's terrifying. It's terrifying. I agree. It's absolutely terrifying. Yeah. It's scary. It's very scary. Depression is scary. Anxiety is scary. Panic attacks. Horrible horrible when you really think that you're dying you don't know what's happening like when i had mine everything would go dark you know the room would start spinning i couldn't breathe i couldn't speak i couldn't explain what was going on the scariest thing Mm -hmm. so i wish more people knew that there are options simple very very simple and one of the things i love about these modalities is that usually people feel a change after one session it's not, again, if you have chronic pain, it's not going to go away after one session. That's unrealistic. But you may feel something ch- shifted, something's changed, something feels a little different. People will say, I feel lighter. I feel like something is changing. Yes, yes, because you're getting all the gunk out. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that, you know, we're sharing this message, you know, just with our listeners, because there may be people out there that have tried you know, 
10 different things and they they still just feel the same, you know, and being able to have these resources and, you know, and, and look this information up and have somebody to go to may make them feel better because so, there's nothing worse than going and seeing a therapy and you go session after session after session, and you still feel like crap. Exactly. And, and you're you, paying for it. And you're paying for it. <laughs> Yeah. And then you can think that something must be really wrong with me. Yeah, I'm broken. I'm doing the work. Right. <laughs> I'm doing the work and nothing's changing. And you know, the, the pandemic is, was absolutely horrible, especially for New York. I'm not saying it was better for other places. But New York was hit really hard. But one good thing that came out of it is that now we're able to, people are so used to going on Zoom and working on Zoom. We could have these sessions on Zoom. I don't need to be next to you. You could be in Australia, you know, you could be anywhere, really. And actually, I prefer it that way because if we're going to be uncovering your emotional and your energetic roots of your emotional and physical and mental problems, I want you comfortable. I want you in your favorite chair with your favorite blanket. I want you with your favorite mug of tea or coffee or whatever, you know, water, it doesn't matter. I want you as comfortable as you can be. I don't want you traveling to see me and then traveling home, processing what happened, what we talked about. You know, the Zoom is incredible. There are a couple of things, like I said, I won't do on Zoom only because I need to meet, to watch a person's breathing and their posture. Their, but most, mostly everything can be done by Zoom. I do sessions completely remotely. I do sessions by email. But I don't even, I don't even need to talk to someone. I don't even need to. Yes, everything is energy. We're all energy. I could tap into your subconscious mind with your permission, only with your permission. But if you, you know, you come to me for a session, you're giving me that permission. If you know the session's going to be done by email. With children, children don't need to be present. Children don't need to sit with me in session. They could be playing three rooms away, five miles away. I don't care. If a parent comes to me and asks for help, I just need parents' permission to tap into that child's energetic field. And I know it sounds a little intrusive, but it's really not. It's, and it's always for their best good. I will, it's not hypnosis. I'm not brainwashing anyone. I'm not making them like spinach and they don't like spinach. There is, I can't do that. You know, mm-hmm. if I could do that, my face would be on Times Square and every billboard, you know, <laughs> if I could make kids eat vegetables and not like candy. <laughs> It's not, it's not like that. And it's only yeah. if your subconscious mind deems this intrusive and it finds that I shouldn't be doing this, I won't get anywhere. I will get a no and I'll stop the session. Yeah. Simple as that. Wow, this is so interesting. I appreciate you sharing your personal story, what your experience is and, and how you've been able to help people. I think this is this is amazing. So for our listeners, where can they find you if they're wanting more information on Mari. So my website is www.marihelps.com. It's M-A-R-I-H-E-L-P-S.com. I have my website crashed about three weeks ago. I had to rebuild it from scratch. Don't even ask. That was fun. So a couple of <laughs> buttons are not working still. A couple of, that I'm changing that, but the information is there. Sessions are there. My pricing is there and booking link is available. I customize each session based on the person. There's no one fit all. And my consultations are always free. I always meet with people, we'll discuss what you want, what you, you know, what you're trying to accomplish out of session. I want to make sure people are comfortable working with me. It's very because you know I'm not for everyone. No one is. And my first session is $25 just again to show you what it looks like, to what it looks like, to give you a taste of it and then decide if you want to pursue it. So I think that's pretty, pretty accessible. And this way, yeah. don't feel like they wasted their life, you know, life savings on a session and wasn't successful. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That is so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. This was fun. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I'm G-Rex. And I'm Dirty Skittles. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. We'd love to listen to your feedback. We can't do this without you guys. It's okay to be not okay. Just make sure you're talking to someone.